Okay, so, well, this is going to be part one of, well, possibly two parts of, well, wrapping up D4DJ All Mix now that it's over. We've kind of made the accepted decision with, well, little to no information about when the English dub's coming out. So that's what basically part two will be covering. Yes. So part one will be... Kind of a wrap up of the series as a whole. Yeah, as we currently know it. And then part two, if it ever happens, would be a overview or wrap up of the English dub. Which will probably actually take a while. It'll yes. probably be a month or two before the English dub comes out. If at all. Based on more <laughs> track records with um, First Mix. Guess we should do um, the MVP for yeah. episode 11. Yes, <laughs> it was Rinky. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Watch Rinky get it for episode 12. Yeah, that'd be funny. I don't think you voted for episode 11. I know, I think I voted for Shinobi episode 10. And I think I was like, yeah, I voted for who I wanted to vote for. So Rinky for the last two episodes, basically. I think so. Roll the clip. The subject of our MVP. Mm -hmm. This episode's MVP. This is a tough one. Rinky. (laughs) (laughs) So I guess once we do part two, we have to cover up well, episodes 12, MVP on part two, which means you're going to wait a while for that one. I guess so. Uh, I have a feeling I already know, but what are your overall thoughts on D4 DJ All Mix? It is good, but a little different to what I was expecting, mm-hmm. although not by much. So I kind of well knew going to this all six units were going to be a part of it, but I was kind of surprised how they were able to kind of Make that work. I guess, yeah. Uh, along those same lines, I also had that exact same thought of how are they going to do this? You know, what what is the overall idea that's going to be holding the season together? I, I like the overall idea of, you know, sort of there being this like community event every month. And obviously that fits in very well just with the overall theme of D4DJ. Oh, yeah, DJ. definitely. Like, didn't I explain to you kind of like, the, the creator of this, um, while the D4DJ project described his purpose of it was to, yeah, connect. Absolutely. And uh, I think All Mix was a, a pretty good encapsulating way of doing that and, and showing that and showing that theme. That's not to say that I don't have <laughs> some gripes about it, but... Well, that's like anything. Like, if you say something's perfect, well, I can point out to you a liar. Absolutely. Because nothing's, <laughs> well, if you really think about it, nothing's truly perfect. No, definitely not. But yeah, I think overall, I was pretty happy with it. Same here. Let's theorize some things. Do you have any ideas or thoughts on like a different way they could have approached bringing all six groups together? I think the biggest thing, and I'm going to kind of go here with what I was originally thinking they were going to do, was probably going to be like a lead up to D4 Fest or D4 yeah. Fest itself. Yeah. As I guess we see with the bingo board, which is a nice segue <laughs> to the bingo board. Yes. Can we just pull up the uh, bingo board real quick? Because upon rewatching, I noticed something and I was like, did we mark that off? That's... No, we haven't ticked it off. And I wonder if you can realize what it is. Well, it's nothing from the the last line there. You did mention something in the last episode. Could it be Call of Artemis reforms? No. Um, Shinobi's grandpa, he does make a very brief appearance. In a um, uh, photo or something. Oh, right. <laughs> So <laughs> that does count. Technically it means we have a bingo if we count it. <laughs> and then I only noticed that. I was like, I think he made an appearance and yeah, he does. Which is weird because if you see the um, photo up on the wall, it's just of mm. his motorbike, but then in another frame he's on it. Right, right, which right. Which is weird. Yeah. There is one frame where you do get to see his face and I think in that photo. Oh, okay. Or like a few frames. Yeah, but yeah. But it's still enough there. Right. I personally... Wouldn't count that one because my thought process of that one would be that like he would actually show up as a character and have at least a line maybe. Yeah, but he's there in spirit. (laughs) (laughs) I guess technically is there definitely in spirits. Well, after all, she does a similar line of work to what Shinobu did. Absolutely. Well, he did. He's kind (laughs) of like doing other stuff in like the music industry now. But he's, she's basically using his old studio, though. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, she's Shinobu's basically using uh, his old studio and I think there was still some of his old gear there as yeah. well. So, yeah, definitely there in spirit. So I guess, yeah, we'll tick that off. I know, back to what you were saying. 
I think definitely the way they went with it took me by surprise uh, in a good way. I definitely think the only other plausible way would have been, yeah, some sort of competition, whether, you know, that had anything to do with D4Fest or not. But yeah, some sort of competition. But then how would that work? I, I think there could have been possibly some connection with the record label that um, Photon Maiden are with. And possibly, you know, the the prize could have been something along the lines of like a record contract. That would be yeah. interesting, but then there's their real stake for Photon Maiden. That's a good um, a good point. So yeah, I guess that no, that's the only. Well, thing I guess that they could I do it could... for shits and gigs, but still, that doesn't seem the most satisfying way to include them, especially considering the sort of arc they had in first mix. Yeah, I guess for Photon Maiden to up the stakes, maybe. You know, because they've already got the contract with them, there could have been like uh, some sort of international distribution deal. Maybe they're on some sort of like lower entry contract that only gets some distribution for the Asia Pacific or something like that, where maybe, yeah, to up the stakes for them um, to make it worthwhile to have, you know, Photon Maiden actually in the show. If that was the case, I think that would have even been a good way to introduce the other units that kind of got introduced sort of around about the top, just a bit before the show aired. But Which, then I think that would have taken away from the, well, the core six. I think so. I think they definitely did a great job of really not introducing too much new stuff, but really focusing on what we already know and then just adding to that to make it actually yeah, worthwhile. For the people that don't obviously play Groovy Mix, um, who've only seen First Mix, I think they did yeah, pretty a pretty good job. And it was a pretty creative way of getting all six groups together. Although I do have one grievances with the series because this is kind of shown in the bigger book because I was hoping for either the second season to be cut while D4 Fest yeah. or the lead up to it or even lead up to it plus D4 Fest in like the last few episodes. But they didn't do that, which <laughs> like don't get me wrong, that would have been interesting, but it's a sh- right, they didn't take and like, I sort of understand why, but at the same time, don't. The only reference that we really get to D4 Fest is this sort of like fever dream episode that we got there when uh, for the, the Happy Around episode. Um, it's also brought up at the very start of First Mix. And then it kind of, yeah. that flashback kind of reoccurs throughout First Mix. Mm. I know, but I just wanted to bring that up there for comparison because that would yeah. have been a really good way of kind of, well, having that event being kind of established as kind of, I, this is important. This is what got them into it. Yeah. So you'd think for all the six units to appear, mm-hmm. that this big event would happen. And that's kind of why I originally thought it was going to be that. Delving into your knowledge of the D4DJ lore, is is D4Fest a yearly event? Yes and no. Because it kind of used to be, but yeah. then like in between, well, the, well, the flashback you see in First Mix yeah. and the events... Well, the D4 Fest events in Groovy Mix that um, while D4 Fest mm. was on hiatus and it, like the story for um, the D4 Fest in the game yep. was it, like its first time in like 16 or something like years. Right. So kind of coming back from the hiatus. Yeah. And so is there any mention of it returning to a yearly event in Groovy Mix? I'm not sure because I, being an idiot kind of didn't follow the, st- the story <laughs> as well as I thought I was. Because, yeah, I would think that, obviously, if it was a yearly event and the entire season of All Mix spanned an entire year or more, it, it would get mentioned a lot more than what it had gotten mentioned in All Mix. So it, it sort of just seemed weird that it didn't really get mentioned. The way I viewed D4 Fest was kind of like the big one. Yeah, in, absolutely. Like, kind of using... Well, GTA 5 was a point of reference there, mm-hmm. which if you've played GTA 5, you should know what I mean by the big one. I mean, I have, but it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's the um, the Union Depository heist, which is, yeah, the, the biggest heist you end up pulling off in the game. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the characters refer to it as the big one, and that's kind of and that's kind of the way I saw D4 Fest was the, as that big event. Absolutely. So moving on. I was thinking oh. kind of getting our favourite song, well, most like performance and least favourite performance. I think. Least favourite for me probably would be probably Mermaid Doze. I think 
the way that they set it up during the episode, it didn't quite meet expectations. So it was sort yeah, of. I um, kind of can't argue with that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's like something that I think a lot of the fan base could probably agree on or right. not. I guess let us know down in the comments. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Let me know if I'm wrong in your uh, point of view. But yeah, I just feel like overall it was an okay song. It was an all right performance, but the fact that the entire episode is them building Making, it up yeah, yeah, to this thing is like, there's this new thing we're doing. It's going to be amazing. Um, and it kind of feels more like just the um, more of the same. Yeah, the the fact that they brought in this you know featured artist on the song and there wasn't any emphasis on what that feature artist actually worked on, like whether it was them actually singing in some part or whether it was just them like or as like a producer just like taking things here and there, moving them around or writing a whole section. We have no idea yeah. on what they actually contributed to the song. So, yeah, that would be my worst. I would say I kind of sort of agree with that one, but also at the same time I wasn't a fan of Happier Around Days. Okay. It was interesting, but just like I think it was just my initial action was like, what the fuck? That <laughs> it was like that was kind of when the, um, well, the um, bomb drop happened. I realized, oh, yeah, mm. there's been something kind of going on this whole time. Yeah, okay. I so I was a bit slow on the uptake. Definitely overall, like that that episode as well is another weird one. I think the episode... I find it, yeah, the episode itself is interesting, yeah. but the performance, it's just... It's neat, but I guess it's really kind of just, in my opinion, well, in my case, just drawn the short straw. Yeah. Although I think Mermaidos was also, I would say, pretty close. So I could probably swap them out and just change me. I just wanted to do... Yeah. Something different and just agreeing with you. Oh, so uh, in my mind, they're kind of sort of tied together. No, I'd pay that for sure. And and best. Okay, yeah. now this one, <laughs> this is really <laughs> tough. It is. Because like, I'm just trying to think of like, just just pick out three and I'm having a hard time. <laughs> if I had to narrow it down to two. Oh, so if we, if we weren't doing performances, I could just say around and around, which is the music for the outro. Because that thing, every time I hear it, I just can't help but um, jam out a little. The biggest thing I'm sad about with this wrapping up is I won't be able to, unless I rewatch it, I won't be hearing that again. Although I do listen to it a lot in my downtime. So <laughs> I guess that's a bit of a lie. But if I had to narrow it down to two performances, it would have to be Overwhelm or Arakana. So okay. Peaky Peaky and Rondo. There, there are some good choices, yeah. Mine, I would have to do the same, narrow it down to two. Um, Although... If I had to pick three, it would have to be the collab between Photon Maiden and Lyrical Lily. Didn't they collab? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to split them up into... Because we sort of saw two different styles of performance. There was, you know, earlier on in the season, we saw just like straight up performances, them on stage, playing the song, dancing, you know, VJing, everything happening, you know, as we've seen previously. But then in the later half... We got these performances which were much more music video like, where we have, you know, cuts in between scenes of other things and like the introduction of all the more special effects stuff. So I think taking that into account, I would have, yeah, some sort of tie between definitely Rondo's performance um, earlier on in the season. And then I think the Photon Maiden song, their, their one. Not the collab between uh, Photon and Lyrical Lily. Although I guess now we can move on to our favourite scene. So I was originally going to do this episode by episode and then I realised, wouldn't that be a bit tedious? That would take a very long time. So yeah, I kind of tr did... Uh, actually, I just realised a lot of the um, scenes I did like, I kind of already sort of turned into memes already. So, But I guess I'll have to point out one that I was beaten to the punch by turning into a meme and that was the, the scene where um, Toa, um, what... Gets spooked by a snake, and now I was like, no, it's not a real snake. But in meme format, it's really, well, the meme for it is a lot more funny than the original scene. Yeah. That's why I love it so much. The scene was already fun to begin with, but this meme that this person came up with is like, oh, perfection. It was pretty good. Other standout scenes for you, or favorite scenes? The um, the sauna scene with um, Lyrical Lily and Mermaido. That was a good one. Oh, yeah, that was hilarious. Just like just just watching them slowly like just struggling to cope with the heat and being like yeah yeah we gotta get the hell out of here. That was a good one. 
So I already gave my two, your two. This is tough. My two are going to be pretty different to yours, I think. I'm going to say like most of episode two where they're doing like the vlogging um, and creating I was going to bring that up, but... It's like, that's a whole lot to yeah. put in. Um, I guess we could just put in the highlights, if, like especially the peaky one. That's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some really good moments in that whole episode. Definitely the peaky one where... Um, and oh, Although just got, to throw out random, the start of episode six with that um, kind of little nod to Nice yeah, yeah. I just love it because it's just in my head can that it's a reference to that film. It's weird because it's an old film and I... I've got around to watch it and it's like, yeah, I know what this is, but I haven't watched the thing. I just know this is a reference to this. Uh, and I think uh, my number two would probably be, be uh, the Photo Maiden episode. <laughs> They're having the um, the meeting with their, oh, yeah. their management team. Uh, I, I like the second round. That one was yeah, funny. The second round was good, but I did like the... The first round was pretty neat. I like the seriousness, um, the sort of change of mood. Uh and I, I liked um, that. It was just a different pacing, I think, compared to a lot of other stuff which we've seen both in first mix and in all mix to that point. So, yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. I'm just trying to think, is there any other things we'd like to gather? Um, I guess most dislike parts or oh, letdowns. Well, this one's actually going to be tough for me. I've I've got one. I'm still pretty salty on the whole typhoon thing. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I forgot about where the hell did August go, but I figure the more I've kind of thought about it, it's like it makes sense why they kind of, well, shafted August, even though I'm kind of a bit salty about that. You believe they've summed it up to the typhoon, but I think I know the real reason. Okay. Because they, they would have to do another episode. Right. So they would have, to, to fit the whole story in, they would have had to do 13. Well, they could have just, what, done December, December. Mm -hmm. Or like December slash January for the last one. Yeah. But I was seeing title wise, it's like mm. it's like, yeah, episode twelve doesn't have a month to it. And mm. I think that's the real reason. I think so. Like uh, that, Although that's... they did it originally ten because in the preview they just say, Yeah, next episode August. Yeah. So there's still some some weird stuff going on there. Yeah. Um I was saying aliens. <laughs> <laughs> we might as well. That's that's a better explanation than uh I think anyone could actually give us uh I, I would I would accept aliens. <laughs> I only just threw that out there as a joke. I would say reptilians while we're at it. <laughs> Anything else? It all works. Uh, Let's go all ancient aliens up in this. Yeah. <laughs> aliens. Aliens cause the typhoon. <laughs> God damn it. No, I can't. I'm just going to stop it. Get some help. But yeah, a couple of little things that I mentioned in previous episodes of just like things being a little bit too convenient here and there. You know, yeah, everyone. That's definitely like, I can live with it, but it is like, there would have to be ways where it, just to make the story a little more interesting by kind of having it, the hurdles not so easily overcome. Yeah, a little bit more friction here and there. You know, it's like we saw it in, um, in First Mix at sort of like the later, in some of the later episodes where but some of the members of Happy Around would like not be 100% in on the idea and sort of come in to the episode or like in the middle of the episode be a bit annoyed at other characters, uh, which, yeah, we definitely didn't get much, if any, of that during All Mix. Not uh, only that, but there was, I think it was episode six, if I'm Correct in first mix, mm. whereas like that, um, just due to um, some of the members of Happy Around not getting well, Happy Around Day. I had to correct myself there. I hate <laughs> saying Happy Around now. I just have to say Happy Around Day. Their grades weren't good enough, and since their grades weren't good enough, they would not mm. be able to perform because of that. Yeah, yeah. So they had to kind of group up and cram overnight, basically. Even though the episode was funny because. They spent the vast majority of not actually doing anything <laughs> related to that. Wise and then Maho was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, just cooking food. Like, yeah, she was like having a bath, and she realized, "Oh yeah, we should be studying." So just kind of found funny. I guess the only unit that had really high stakes, you know, had a lot to lose, was Photon Maiden. Um, and I think they did those episodes pretty well. But yeah, other than that, everyone else. Although there was a fair bit of stakes with um. Episode five, because, well, there was a possibility that Rondo wouldn't have been able to perform at Alter Ego and G2L. Yeah. The equipment not 
while working at where they were originally doing the um, performances and that at, yeah, they wouldn't have been able to perform. Although I think there was the alternative, can you just use the school? But yeah. I think Shinobi does bring up that yeah, the school's all booked out or something. Right. I can't remember. I don't much. remember. But yeah. But that would have been interesting. Is like, what would mm. Rondo do if yeah, the um, the people that the their manager as well as the well, I say their manager or the manager of the alter ego yep. as well as the other person said no. What do um, they do then? Do they just go out in the street or something? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, they could have done some busking. That would have been interesting. We, um, Which I think that would have been the most possible to do with Rondo. Yeah, I, I think so. I think um, that. Now I want to see an episode of this that. <laughs> Just yeah. Rondo busking. That would be interesting, actually, because uh, that's. Yeah, I don't think we we didn't really get any outside performances. They're all inside. From yeah. Memory. Yeah. So any any other uh, low points? No, not really. As I said, I just have a hard time coming up with them. Kind of just using. Well, just I've already brought up my gripes, kind of in the yeah. talking points. Yeah. About other stuff. So I guess to wrap things up, what would you rate D four DJ? All mix, like probably out of 10. Out of 10. You know what? I think what I would like to do is rate the season uh, as a whole and then the music separately as okay, a whole. Okay, that would be interesting. So I think for, for the season as a whole, I would probably rate it six and a half out of 10. But then as for the actual music overall as well, I would probably rate that about an eight, eight and a half. Ooh, that's... Really good. Because, yeah, there was some very good songs. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and what I've noticed as well, listening to some of the songs on Spotify, is that we don't get the full songs within the episode. We get sort of like edited versions a lot of the time. Because That I, makes sense because yeah. they don't have much runtime to work with. Yes. It's actually like, to be expensive to animate like a whole yes, thing. For sure. I was listening to the, the collab between Happy Round and Peaky Peaky this morning. And, um, yeah, there's a whole section that they've cut out, which is actually very cool. If you haven't, go and listen to the actual full songs that have been released online. I think they've got all the songs that were performed in All Mix out now on Spotify. And I think they also have their stuff out on Apple Music. Yeah, which so. Isn't that, didn't that used to be called iTunes or something? Or is uh, that a different thing? No, they're both. iTunes is still around. But, yeah, Apple Music is, like, the main part of it now. Because I've also listened to, like, the Rondo song which i can't remember the name of and the Arakana. yeah that's the one and i think um, that's how it's pronounced yeah. and so the fo- god help me yeah and the photon maiden song as well um i've listened to that and uh yeah there's definitely little bits that have been edited out of the uh the full songs so that they could fit it into the episodes but yeah that's mine so yeah although i do enjoy happy arando song better on spotify than in the episode okay yeah right interesting so what's your overall for the season, like after you give, I think your ratings were a lot more reasonable than what I was thinking. But <laughs> then I guess that was just kind of my bias playing that I was going to rate it highly. But now I feel like I want to do mm. something more real, like something that's more realistic but more reasonable at the same time. It's like I can't do that. <laughs> I'm going to go um, just be <laughs> a little pain in the ass. Seven point six two. Seven point six two. Yeah, I was thinking of originally going like what eight point eight. Right. Yeah, fair enough. So I did kind of temper it a little. But the music, I, I guess I'd give it a nine. But I, f- I would have gave it a ten. But as I said, I just can't, if I'm being perfectly honest myself, give anything a ten. Cool. So there's been a lot of theories going around online of a second season of All Mix. What are your thoughts? Well, no, All Mix is the second season. It's just kind of... Yeah, I guess a follow-up to, to All Mix. What are your thoughts um, well, I, I had a feeling that they were going to do second, well, do a second season yeah. after first mix, but that's more me just wanting more. And I have a feeling just how, I'd say, I haven't got the numbers here, but if first mix did well enough to um warrant a second season, yeah, I'm pretty sure um with how um, my opinion of all mix, I think it would have probably done as well, if not better than first mix. So mm. uh, the question is, did it do well enough to justify another season? Sure. But considering they've done like three seasons of a similar series, I have a feeling that they may do a third season for this. Okay. But that's more of just, I wouldn't say a hunch, more of an educated guess. Even them, I think that's pushing it. My question is, what would they do though? Well, yeah, I guess we got a kind of a little Easter egg sort of moment at the 
end of episode 12 where uh, you mentioned that we saw a slight glimpse of one of the new units. Well, two of the new units, Unicord and Abyss Mare, which all I can say about Unicord is like, I can't, out of principle, I can't like the unit. <laughs> Fair enough. Weird because it's like there's members of the unit that I'm like, yeah, I would like to kind of well see more of them, but right. there's just this, just this wide character that the deepest pits of hell would be too nice for him. And I think you can guess who that is. Yes, I do believe you are referring to Michi Roo. Yep. <laughs> what about Abysmir? Is there potential there? Well, from what I've heard, they're kind of planned to be sort of like the like more of an antagonist to the other units, which, well, that's kind of sort of, I think, Bushy Road's wording. Okay. So that means there'll be a bit of outside competition for them, mm. considering I think Elvis Mia is from the state. So not only, yeah, right. not only are they foreigners, but they're also going to be like opponents, like the six main units. That's cool. Yeah, a little bit of rivalry could be interesting. Although... You could have kind of set up some interesting rivalries with the other units, but then... Yeah. I mean, you get a little bit from Shinobu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's it, really. Although, I guess if you kind of... Even though all the members and that from all the units kind of seem to get along with each other and that to a certain degree and that... Yeah. There is, like, kind of a little bit of rivalry between them, especially with, like, kind of them wanting to do, like, perform... Well, have their performance better than well, the previous one and that. I guess so. Yeah, if you framed it like that, every every new episode, each uh, unit that's performing that month was trying to top yeah. the previous. So yeah, I guess so. I, I guess it was it was a very friendly competition. Uh, Where this is probably going to be more like a bit more cutthroat, maybe. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so other than yeah, the introduction of those two new units. I guess, yeah, we don't really get too much more of what, you know, a follow-up season, season would could, look like. Yeah, it could look like. But if you had to speculate. I definitely think, I, I do really, if if they did, I do really think um, something moving towards d 4 Fest would be really cool. So like a second d 4 Fest. Yeah. Uh, um, I guess, well, technically like, not second, but second that the units would be involved in. Although no. it'd be interesting to kind of see some of the um, legacy units, so to speak, mm. to, um, well, even show up and perform. Absolutely. Although I be. think for one of them, I don't think that would be a possibility. Although for the other one, I think I see it being not a guarantee that they'll probably show up in yep. maybe the next season and perform, but mm. especially if you go down the deep soul first route, but it's definitely plausible. Although I guess the other legacy unit could just, get a new member because yes, it's so. like one just left and they couldn't get in contact with him. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's happened in real life as well. I mean... Uh, or it could just be a free man show. <laughs> yeah. You've had bands like Queen over the years have new vocalists take up the mantle from Freddie Mercury. Metallica is a big one where they've had three or four different bassists over their years. So it's not unheard of. And um, like... um. Didn't they get a fella from Guns N' Roses to replace um, someone from Akadaka? Yeah. So you had Brian Johnson who left uh, ACDC for a while there and they got... Um, um, wasn't it... Um, what's his name? Axel Rose. I was going to say Axel Rose. <laughs> it's like the, I was having a trouble. The name wasn't quite <laughs> coming to my head. Uh, yeah, to, to fill in on vocals, which is interesting choice. <laughs> I actually haven't listened to any of the um, well those performances he did filling in vocals. They're not bad, but they're not... Yeah, they're not ACDC. Well, thank you all for joining us on this journey of reviewing D4DJ's All Mix rev series season. It was a pretty fun ride and hopefully there'll be one last episode coming once the uh, English dub has been released. Oh boy, I can't wait. Go on, can I even sound any more sarcastic? <laughs> Jesus Christ. A little more enthusiasm, me. <laughs> so let us know your thoughts down in the comments, your favourite moments of D4DJ's All Mix, also your favourite songs and any theories you may have for a follow-up season. Check out the description box below. Where we have things. All right. Thanks again for joining us and we'll catch you sometime in the future. Yep. Hopefully. Unless something happens. <laughs>